time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and I am in the basement of a person's house I only met hours ago. His name is Tom, he has a big ass CNC machine, and he's gonna help me make these. These are the butt kicker brackets for my simulator that are about three years overdue. But the project is finally done, I have them all in my hand, and if you guys sit tight after this little introduction and watch this whole video, you too will know how to create these from scratch. If you're smart, if, if you're not smart, well then you're, you're on your own. Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with the man himself, Tom Randolph, the creator of the butt kicker brackets. That's what we're talking about in this video today. And for those of you guys that don't know, this a project's been in the making for about three years now. And uh, the first guy that made the brackets, unfortunately he passed away. I, I feel bad about that. That's that's why it's taken three years to get to this point. I had and to that's mourn. That's why I was nervous. About <laughs> yeah. the project. I told him one of the requirements of this project was you could not die. I did my best. He, he did not die. He is here right now, guys. But we have one of the finished brackets right here, and this is what we're going to be talking about in the video and showing you how this actually came into reality. Um, I thought uh, it sounded like a cool thing to do. It'd be really easy, and I could bang it out really quick because, well, I know how to machine aluminum. All right. Well, did, did you bang it out really quick, or did, did you maybe, like, Hit, hit some issues well after i received the original design files which were in a format not really usable for cam um, <laughs> I and know. then i realized when i looked at the design it really wasn't suitable for machining but it was good for welding and i didn't want to do that so i redesigned them and then i was on my way yeah so basically i sent him the original designs and i'll show you guys right now yeah, what those I have, look I like one of them up on the computer. yep ju it's just it's kind of like overhang and obsessive use of material kind of an awkward design well the it transfers the power by torque instead of actually by up and down is the biggest problem. Yeah, it turns out a real engineer looking at this came back at me and he's like, you know what, I think I can redesign these better. And I think it took you day. like a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. in a single day he came back to me with a design that's this, this new design that's two different pieces that are basically bolted together. It's very slim, very very trim compared to the original ones which mm -hmm. put, the, put them outboard exactly. to the simulator. And I mean, they're absolutely solid as a rock. So the first step in this process, of course, was you designing them. And that required you to go into your own CAD software. So why don't you tell us a little Autodesk bit about- Autodesk Fusion. Is that what if you, you don't use it, man, I love it. They charge you nothing until you earn $100,000 from their software. Which, like, almost nobody does. So exactly. it's basically it's free. It's free, and it is the complete. It used to be called HSM Works. Um, it's got all sorts of machining stuff in it. It is a wonderful 3D CAD package. You, if you haven't used it, check it out. Yeah, it's a step up from, from Google SketchUp. Oh, way, way, <laughs> way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll show it to you today. Yep. So what we do in Autodesk is we create these things called sketches. And you want to sketch for, like, the top and the bottom and the sides right this is that top plate that we talked about and you can see that really it's just a bunch of circles on uh, other circles really this is a circle of bolt holes here these three for the transducer are on another circle and and then there's also this guy Oh, which wow. is which is the bracket right so the first thing I did was I modeled the frame that it was gonna fit over Whoa. And, and then I drew the end profile, which is this guy right here. And so then once I had that, then I could extrude that to form the basic shape of this. And let me just hide the frame there for a moment, right? So effectively what I did was I took this end profile and I extruded it so that it had length in Fusion. And that's then, a lot simpler than I thought it would be, actually. Oh, it's, it's, that's why it took so very little time to do. And then what you do is you start another sketch on this face that did not have the slots, and then you draw the slots in, and you extrude these holes through here. Right, so. So you quite literally created this 3D design by making just some 2D drawings, essentially. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. And so likewise, then I created a, a sketch that is the top surface, and I put in the holes that matched, um, well, on the second try, it matched, <laughs> <laughs> the holes in the, in the plate, right? Shit happens, folks. So these holes right here have to match with these holes right here. Okay, and then from this, I did pretty much literally, I just saved it as one and I moved this, this thing over, right? 
so that it's now it's just a one slot instead of the two and it's got the same holes it's got the same slots and poof the 3d model is now done remember you you asked yep. me for some measurements i busted out my little micrometer thing which i had never used previously so i was quite <laughs> proud of that i was using a tape measure at first but yes, you were like he was. yeah he's like not a lumber tape measure is yeah that? it was it was a lumber <laughs> lumber tape measure and he's like okay hold on i need a little bit better measurements than this so we broke out the micrometer got the measurements sent it to him and he had this design literally mocked up in a day and i mean it, it hasn't changed a whole lot from the very original design that you sent no, me. no the only thing that i really ever changed yeah. was the placement and sizing of the slots in the side of the slots on the side which make it a little bit more adjustable mm -hmm. on the frame of the simulator and it also has some really delicate engraving which i'll show you guys as we move on through the project so now now you went ahead and created it on the computer we had the cad design that was compatible with your particular cnc uh, at this point cnc it's right a, it's a 3d cad yep so 3d cad but it was better than the, the stl yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You. notice how there's no lines here whereas yeah. on the other one you'll see everything comes in it's got these lines because the edges are defined yep. in a step file but they're not defined in an stl file they're all just right they're all polygons and trapezoids which means that there's no actual arcs there's no actual lines it doesn't know what a hole is it's a mess yeah and you're not the first person that's told me that either yeah. everybody keeps but unfortunately when i started with 3d printing everything was an stl or an obj yeah and so you're, you're right it's it's a completely different you know additive versus subtractive and all of that stuff but then once we got this uh all created if you will you had to basically mill it out of a block of aluminum using your machine so why don't you tell us a little bit about your cnc machine okay my cnc machine is a next wave automation is the company and the machine is called a cnc shark hd2 plus god knows what the other version numbers sounds are. fancy yeah yeah exactly um effectively it's a three axis router based cnc machine um it is in part made out of plastic so a lot of things you have to do you have to be very gentle with it which actually makes you a better machinist right because mm -hmm. you don't have a machine that's completely unlimited and you can effectively break it right in order to get good results you got to be nice to the machine like a lot of people were asking me when i posted on instagram why didn't you just use your x-carve the answer is my x-carve has a spindle on it that looks like it's a motor out of an rc car it's great for milling soft woods not so great for milling very hard metals even soft metals really so i am planning on upgrading my x-carve to be able to handle some bigger projects but there's no way it's going to cut through things like we witnessed this thing doing that spindle as looks long like as you do it at the right speed where it can handle it it'll cut yeah but the spindle on his thing uh, honestly it's looks like it, it came out of like a little electric car is what it looks like like a little uh, it is in the same class yeah it's a three horsepower spindle that's crazy so now of course the next step is we have the plans we have the beefcake cnc machine so we put the two things together and that required a lot more steps than i actually thought so <laughs> i thought with a cnc machine pretty much you drop in a block of metal you hit a button beep boop beep you get this pretty much it's true all you do is add in the metal and you push the button to go and then it sits there and does nothing yeah yeah, it's it's absolute lies in other words all right so here we have the triangle piece right here and you can see that it started oh, the, mounting. the mounting plate that's what we're going to refer to it on from from here on out you know i got you got to be real technical when you're dealing with these engineer types mm. uh, so <laughs> so so this plate itself actually started out as a square plate yes. Uh, yeah, a random plate of three eighths inch thick aluminum. Yep, and we stick it on there and it basically drilled out all of these holes you see in the center and the three holes on the outside. But then it also drilled a couple more holes. And when I asked yes. him what those holes were for, it was to align it to a piece of wood. Somebody asked me today on Instagram why I didn't make it out of wood. Ah. And I laughed a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry if you're watching this video <laughs> and you're the person that laughed at, but you can't hook a 250 watt audio transducer to, to wood. That's right. It's not going to work very well. So what he did is he took the plate, put it in there, drilled all the holes. Then we took it off, mounted it to a piece of wood using the extra holes. So, so bolted to the piece of wood, what this allows it to do now is to cut the shape out. Yep. Which, which, that way when it gets done cutting out, the piece doesn't go flying off or, or move exactly. around to get dinged or ruin the bit. Yeah, so that's, so that's yet another phase. And then you had to go through and tap each one of these outside holes. Yeah, just the three on the outside. Using something you call a Tapmatic. Oh, Tapmatic. Yeah, they're awesome. He loves, man. He talked more about the Tapmatic than he did the CNC machine. This guy, if Tapmatic, you should send this guy some free stuff. <laughs> I'm like not even joking. Like I've never heard somebody talk so in depth about a drill bit. That'd be an RX-90. <laughs> 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 so then you used uh what, what what was the tool the taper was that the th what was the tool uh, we you used a countersink but the okay unique, unique thing we did was we had it machine out um a step a stair step mm -hmm. of the countersink so that when i 
then ran a normal countersink bit in, I only had to go to the place where we got rid of the stair steps. And that way they're all exactly the same height. Unlike when you mm -hmm. do a normal uh, countersink and you're not really sure exactly when to stop. No, it's, it's, and it absolutely looks gorgeous. It looks like jewelry. And I'll tell you why it looks like jewelry. Beforehand, you could tell the metal looked pretty dull when it was on the CNC machine. Well, he takes it out and takes these little things and sticks them in a convection a oven, right? A small convection yeah, oven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you got to bake it. <laughs> you got to bake it. You got to put it in the microwave. Don't put it in the microwave. 250 for five yeah. minutes. Two, <laughs> that's about right. That is. 250 for five minutes. He pulls it out of there, and then you went ahead and put some rubbing compound on it. Yep. The, use some green. Yep. Uh, and the rubbing compound. And, and that stuff worked great. He stuck it on a buffing wheel and and like literally with almost no effort, yeah. the thing just tool turns into jewelry. And it literally looks mm -hmm. like you spent time sanding this. Yep. I mean, we, 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 it, we it actually photographed it. Here's a beautiful photo that was taken by Tom himself of these things that's a very high resolution. I'll post it somewhere so you guys can actually see the resolution because YouTube doesn't do it justice. But uh, it literally looks like jewelry. The thing is a complete and total mirror. And it blew my mind because every time I've ever worked with metal and shining up metal, it's uh, you 100 grit, 300 grit, yeah. 600 grit, 1000 grit, 2000 grit, rubbing compound, then buffing. Yep. And then it looks and then Milky. And then wax. Yeah, at the end you have to wax it. It looks milky. You just did in one step. Yeah, exactly. Didn't even have to use a coloring compound, as they call it. I kind of want to go buy a junker car and just strip all the paint off it and just, just buff the whole thing. Like <laughs> Turn it into he, a really round DeLorean. Stick it in an autoclave and pop it out and just melt the stuff all over it and buff it, right? Exactly. And see how cool it turns yeah, out. Yeah. So then you end up with the top piece and it has the threaded holes and then you can see the transducer mounts to that. But then you have the base. So this project actually was, was a lot harder than I think either was, one of us kind of anticipated. I but wouldn't call it hard. It wasn't hard. It wasn't hard. He's an engineer. He can figure anything out, right? He, he, he could have engineered it. It's more fun than it is difficult. It is. So down here, you have the bottom block. Now, obviously, you had to cut this one out of a much thicker block of aluminum. Exactly. Those came out of a, uh, a bar three inches wide by one and a half inches tall, um, you know, and multiple lengths of that bar. Yeah, no, this thing looks like... And how, how long did this piece take to mill out here on the bottom? Somewhere between an hour and two hours, I think. I that's, don't remember. That's not bad, though. No, no. The original tool path was saying nine hours, and so I said, no, that, that's wrong. I'm pretty sure my <laughs> X-Carve would take, like, a week and a half, two weeks with three-bit changes, yeah, possibly the awesome. fire department involved. Uh, it so, no. It take a while. Yeah, so so now... Now, on a real CNC yep. machine, you know, like one that costs in the hundred to two hundred thousand... The ones we see, like, cutting rims out of cars Yeah, okay, stuff, yeah. that would take like two minutes. Yeah, that's like a nothing job. They laugh at me. If you're a company that has such a CNC machine, I'm sure this guy will put it in his laundry room. That's right. He and totally will. I mean, that's where the CNC machine is now. It is in my laundry room. <laughs> it quite literally, every room in this guy's house is not what it started life as. Uh, so so now we have the fully built bracket here and there's no extra, there's no nuts. The bolts just go straight down into yep. the tapped holes. Exactly. It's a lot lighter design than we had before, a lot more direct design. And then we just have some washers in between just to keep it pretty so that it doesn't scratch things up. But it's a very solid unit. And the best part is you never saw one of these butt kicker LFEs even nope. before you created this. Nope. I got the model number from him and I called the company and I said, hey, can you send me a spec sheet on the mounting? Yep. And they said, oh, yeah, we got one of those. And they sent me a link and I used it. And it said and it was a really weird number, too. It was like <laughs> uh, 3.097 inches right and that's like you know oh yeah try that on a freaking drill press right but you do it in cad and you draw a circle and you say it's this diameter and it goes okay and it just does it <laughs> so so luckily that just worked out I'm, I'm actually really glad that it did because we both were a little worried when i got I here yeah, i brought I've the transducers yeah yeah we honestly thought what are we going to do today if after all this work because i mean it's not like he created one and we tested this. this is my first time meeting the guy in person we've been talking on facebook forever uh but yeah we just jumped right in these things bolted right on i mean yeah. honestly this this is exactly five of them made perfectly perfectly all five of these absolutely perfect and i can take them home mount them on the simulator which will be a separate video now there are two different types of brackets. There's this one right here, which is the big guy that goes over the sleds right. on the front of the Oboto Resolution. Now we have another one sitting back here that we can show you that's this design. And these ones with the thinner channels, um, still adjustable so that I can move them back and forth. But these ones actually mount upside down. And that's why you can see all of the awesome engraving here on the front of both of our businesses. Yep. Uh, that actually is right side up when this is upside down under the seat on the simulator. But now the nice thing about this is all the transducers are tucked 
Yeah, exactly. Away. away. So now I'm not going to hang them up on things when I'm sliding the thing around the floor. Because I literally, every time I use this thing, slide it out on furniture sliders and push it in front of my desk. Right. So having the old design with wings sticking out the side, I probably would have destroyed a couple things or at least put some dents in the legs of the things I already have. Now so, we're going to have to see how his wife survives this because the manufacturer of the transducer said, even when you run one of them, you need to have shock isolation between the chair and the floor. Even if there's carpet, <laughs> You have to have it. Otherwise, it will literally shake your house apart. He's got five of these things on And they're modified. Thing. Yeah, and they're modified to take extra power. Dude, get yourself some shock isolators. <laughs> We're going to have to find you some. I think needless to say, I'm going to need some form yeah, of shock isolators or, yeah, on this thing. It's going to knock pictures yep. off the wall of the next floor down. So at this point in the show, you know how to make a bracket pretty much from scratch. So you could basically just steal all that guy's intellectual property that he spent so many minutes working on. No intellect required. <laughs> actually, it's his. He paid for it. Therefore, it's his. I did. I actually gave him money, but it wasn't that much. And I kind of feel like I robbed him a little, but it's okay. I'll still sleep. All right. So, you know, I, I figured like I came over today and I held a couple things and watched him do stuff. So that's kind of like helping, right? So in a nutshell, <laughs> what we ended up with there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. Five finished brackets. Finally have the modified uh, Sim Vibe butt kicker LFEs on it. I didn't realize they had a 250 watt max. Holy cow. Yeah. These are home wreckers, quite literally. Yep. So the five of them. That's I know. 1250 watts. That's a lot of shaking. I don't even have an amp to drive that much. I think I only have a 500 watt amp. He should wear diapers. I already do. <laughs> So the next step, of course, is I'm going to take these home. I'm going to bolt them onto the simulator, and then we're going to create another video to show you guys how to hook up the sound card because you have to hook up five separate audio channels through the amp and then use a software called SimVibe that then interfaces with the API of the software that you're running, whether it be like iRacing or uh, R-Factor or some of the other racing simulator softwares to simulate brake lockup, oh, sweet. gear changes. Oh, man. Nice. No, it's supposed to. The, the feedback so this is, is not just audio. This, this is awesome. This is not audio. It literally, it's using audio signal. Signals, but the right. signals are actually produced, they're sine waves produced from the software to simulate various different events. That is cool. So that's going to be functional. And then eventually, if you guys stick around long enough on the channel and you hit that subscribe button, you're going to get to see the HTC Vive, because I have one of those coming. It's a VR, VR helmet, basically. And we'll be able to race with a VR helmet with full haptic feedback cool. through the whole simulator. Wow. It's, it's going to be epic. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. A huge thanks again to Tom, or it will say Thom, Thomer, Thomer.com, Photographic. <laughs> You have to say photographic there. That's right. uh, thanks again for all of the hard work that you did on this project. I think it's That's really cool, cool that you fun. offered. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool that you offered to to help me out with this and pick up where the other guy left off and ultimately not just pick it up, but completely redesign the whole thing. And he didn't die. Yeah. If, you, if you die next week, I'm seriously <laughs> deleting this video off YouTube. No, no, you got it. I'm man. just saying. All right, guys, <laughs> I, I hope you like this. All the links, as usual, will be down in the video description to all the various software and hardware used in this demonstration. And uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave you with a uh, very sexy uh, picture of the mounts. Yeah. I was going to say, not of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've still got editing to do, so we'll see.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.